I don't feel so good, Mr. Stark. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Review. Today, I'm taking a look at the Metacom Mafex Marvel Avengers Infinity War Iron Spider. And for those of you keeping count, it's number 081. And it feels like we've been waiting for this for forever. <laughs> and it hasn't been. It's only been like two months. We, by now, we're used to Metacom running late. Anything they solicit, we should expect it to be at least two months late. Either way, it's a year or more after the movie, which gives Metacom kind of a chance to make things a little bit more screen accurate than the companies that try to push the product out right as the movie's hitting. Looking at the package, it's your standard Mafex packaging. It, it's kind of cheap feeling and they've always been like that. They've gotten better with the logos and their layouts, but it's always kind of felt like a dollar store packaging. You can see most of what you're getting in here. There seems to be stuff down there. And before we even get into it, I've already been warned about the Waldos being very thin, very breakable. But at the same time, they've added the blue color in here. That may be another reason for the delay, but at the same time, it's cool, but we'll see. On the side, a promotional shot of Spider-Man. On the back, more pretty promotional shots in all kinds of poses. Some of the stuff you get, you can already tell that the Tom Holland head right here doesn't quite match the final product we're getting. Some warnings, some unreadables. On the side, another promotional shot of Spider-Man. Top, the Avengers Infinity War logo. On the bottom, a lot of legalese. This hologram stamp right here showing that it is actual official Metacom product. But I'm gonna get this open and <laughs> see if I can avoid breaking those Waldos. The stand is taped to the back of the package like it normally is, which I usually forget to feature in the actual review because, I don't know, they're usually kind of weak. I can tighten those up, I guess, but even just, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, what's going on here? Another, tra oh, okay. There's additional trays under holding the web and it looks like this time they've kind of went a little bit more clear with the web, a little bit more translucent, but moment of truth time. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> I was scared there for a minute. Looks like they come off fairly easy off the ball joints there. It looks like the biggest problem is rotating inside this back piece right here. Everything else seems to work. Ooh, oh, oh, oh. Ah, we'll mess with that here in a minute. Let's get to the figure. Ooh, and just look how shiny this is. Looking at the sculpt first, you can see that the webs are indented into the body. It's a good choice, and especially for this. I'm not quite sure how it looks in the movie, but this completely works. There seems to be some black wash down in there, but because the webs are sculpted in, it catches shadow. It's a little bit more prominent than if it had been sticking out or just painted on. But then the spider logo sculpted onto the chest around those webs. You have the blue. It's a little bit flat, but it does have some tech detail here and there, and that keeps it from getting too dull inside the blue. Same thing with the boots. You have the webbing continuing on down here. You have some gold just kind of creeping into the design. It's still undeniably Spider-Man, but with a little bit of Iron Man flavor in it. And that's really what we see in the movie. Metacom's just done a fantastic job of bringing this into plastic form. The gauntlets seem to be a separate piece, but they're glued down, so it, nope, there we go. Okay, it was just very tight on there. But it's not gonna come flying off every time you go to change out the hands. And then like I talked about the paints, uh, for a little bit, we thought they had moved away from the metallic sheen for the reds and the blues. We saw some pictures. They looked a little bit dull. It was like, oh, what? Why? But they brought that back. The red is a nice candy. The blue is not super metallic shiny, but it matches the crotch piece, which is a rubber piece. And it's kind of crazy that they got the sheens to match between the plastic of the legs and the rubber of the crotch. And then again with the gold. I cannot speak highly enough of this. It's just very nicely done. Even when it's layer upon layer upon layer, there's red going to gold, going to blue. They've even done these little blue rectangles right there. And then up at the head, just more of the same. It's that candy red sheen and a Spider-Man mask. <laughs> you can't ask for more than that. I'm sure it's designed this way in the movie, but having the traditional Spider-Man costume in my head, this kind of ear cut out part, it throws me off. But at the same time, it kind of makes sense because that is where his ears are. Out of the package, I didn't have much trouble except for at the waist joint. It was stuck over into this position right here. It was easy enough to 
break loose, but keeping it straight <laughs> is a 24-7 job. But I will say proportion-wise, his arms seem a little bit long. His wrists are at his crotch and then his hands hang below that. It gives kind of a awkward teenage vibe to it, but at the same time, I, I feel like it's not right. The Mafex Homecoming Spider-Man's arms are quite that long. I've tried shifting the arms up because there is a little bit of play there, but even all the way up, the hands hang below the crotch area. But going over articulation, there is a ball joint at the bottom of the neck. Let's look at it right there. Ball joint at the bottom, and then there is a bent dumbbell joint at the top of the neck. All that together, you can look down, you can look way up. Ooh, very nice tilt both ways. It's kind of hard to keep the neck facing forward, and you'll notice there is a paint chip right there. It came out of the package like that. Ball joint under, in fact, let's look at this. The nice thing about the back coming off for extra accessories, you can see the inner workings of some of this stuff. You can see a dumbbell joint coming up into the shoulder piece right there that gives you the up and down. That also gives you the forward and back but then there's a hinge and swivel coming out of the torso into the actual shoulder piece so all together you can get forward really really nice with the back piece back on there it doesn't go back did i say back enough the arm doesn't go back as far as you would think hinges up way past 90 swivels around why are you so sad spider-man we're only going over articulation swivel at the bicep double hinge elbow comes most of the way up the wrist piece right here kind of gets in the way of articulation at the wrist but there is a swivel hinge swivel there ball joint at the mid torso along with the ball joint at the waist you can get over over the other way forward pretty much all the way arc back and then of course rotation at both. You get a drop down joint at the hips and those are attached together on both sides. So you have to hold one while manipulating the other, but you can bring both of them down. Rotates forward up past 90, back out all the way. Look at that. And just like homecoming spotty, if you overextend it, you're gonna pop the hip off. That's better than the joint breaking. And it's a pretty tight pop once you get it back on there. I also talked about this being a rubber piece. It gets out of the way of the hips so you can bring the legs up, but it does bend the rubber back. It's the same on the Homecoming Spider-Man. If you leave that in that position too long, it kind of forms the rubber to that shape. But last night I did put him back in a standing straight up position and the rubber's kind of formed out to its original shape. There's a swivel at the thigh. Double knee, no problem at all kicking his own ass. Ankle has a hinge swivel hinge. I kind of have that off position right there. Ankle back, ankle forward. The pin goes forward for some rocker. And then a toe joint goes boop that far. For accessories, he comes with an extra pair of feet that have magnets in them. Same toe joint as the regular foot. It's easy enough to just pop the foot off, put the magnet on there. And really, now that I have these feet on here with the magnets, I don't see any reason to ever switch back to the ones without magnets. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's better to have them on there than not, I guess. For other accessories in the package, he comes with two relaxed hands. He comes with two splayed out wall crawling hands. He comes with two thwip hands. He has two web gripping hands. They have holes through the middle of them. Come on, baby, plug in there. The fists seem to be a little bit harder to plug in. He has two fists and he has two wall crawling hands with magnets embedded in them. And actually the magnets are pretty strong as long as you get them flat on whatever surface you're sticking them to. Switching out the hands, except for like I showed with the fists, all the rest of them are pretty easy to switch out. The peg has just a slight mushroom to it and the other hands just plug right on. It also comes with several sets of spider webs. You can see it's pretty much just like a clear substance. It's webbing shooting out. You hoop it around the wrist before plugging the hand on. And it's a little bit difficult with this gold gauntlet on here, but it works pretty good. There was two of those. There's also two of the longer ones. Plugs right in. Thwip. And then there's two even longer ones with a right angle kick at the end. These have a little bit more detail to them. I'm not quite sure if it's like that in the movie, but that always makes me think of McFarlane. That just goes into the gripping hand and then you can have him swinging or whatever you want to do. For heads in the package, he has the wide eyed look. You pop that off at the top of the neck. You put on this one, which I've noticed is very, very tight. The alternate head has the eyes just closed a little bit more, a little bit more squinting. Let's see if it pops off without pulling the bucket. That's what's happened several times. The ball joint comes off in the head. That's not good if you want to put that other head on. But I've noticed if you kind of kick to the back, <laughs> it still doesn't work. Damn it. Oh, I got to go get pliers. What the hell? It pretty much looks symmetrical. So if you do pull it out, it doesn't matter which way you plug it in. And then pull this off at the neck. And with that, you get the alternate Tom Holland head with the alternate neck with the costume only coming up halfway. And here, it's not terrible. <laughs> I really do feel like Mafex is getting better with their likenesses, or at least applying paints to the eyes and the skin tone. Because this one came with the Homecoming Spider-Man. But definitely not terrible. 
it's not perfect, but it's not terrible. I will say it does feel a little bit large on the body though. The arms are already hanging down past the crotch and then the big noggin on top. Again, kind of gives that teenager vibe, but at the same time, you can definitely see that it's a little bit large. And with that, we get to the Waldos. Spider-Man's back actually pops off, but if you look at it, it's fairly seamless. Metacom did a good job of this. In fact, when I got this out of the package, I forgot this came off, but if you grab here and here, and pull, the back comes off. You see the three magnets. You see the couple of pegs that plug in right here. You plug in the back piece with the Waldos. It's a little bit tighter fit. It's kind of hard to hit the pegs, but once you get it on there, it looks pretty good. You can probably already tell I had some problems with this. The Waldos themselves are hinged here, here, and here. And then at the bottom, there's a hinge swivel hinge joint. The problem came into play with these plugging into the body, those pegs were stuck. The top two were pretty easy to get unstuck. You just grab by there and turn, and it feels like the pegs longer because it has more support down here. The bottom two Waldos go straight into the back without a lot of buildup to it, so I'm afraid those are really short. I did get this one turning a little bit, but I'm still afraid it's gonna break. In fact, I can't get it to turn now. These two, they freed up. I can turn them like so, like so. And then the Waldos rotate on top of that. But this one snapped off. I thought it was loose. I was moving it back and forth and it just fell off. I was just about to glue it in there and then I remembered that I got a whole hell of a lot of joints with my Amazing Yamaguchi Carnage. And it was a tight fit, but it plugged right into the end of the Waldo. I came back, drilled that out for the peg, but because I couldn't make it a socket for a mushroom peg, it's not the most secure, but it does go in there and it does stay. Because of this one not moving, I'll probably have to come back and do the same for it. But the top two seem pretty secure. They came back and added the blue and I feel like that just sets it off against the red, the blues, and the gold of the costume. They're pretty much there f just for looks. They're not gonna pick anything up. They're not strong enough to hold any weight to them. Also, if you're gonna drill the back out, uh, start smaller than I did because I'm gonna have to come back, add some floor wax to this peg or something to keep that stuck in there. I don't know if there's any way of avoiding breaking them. I mean, I heated them up. I didn't want to heat it too much because I was afraid of warping this back piece and then it wouldn't fit on as nice as it does. Oh, well shit, I just broke that trying to turn it. This thing. Well, that's why the top pegs are a little bit stronger. They're bigger pegs going in than the bottom ones because you put the Rebel Tech joint on there, you try to plug it in, it's just hot dog in a hallway. The bigger Rebel Tech joint fits in there, so maybe I could come over back and splice something together right there. Really, I should have expected this. In order to get them movie accurate, they had to go thin with the joints, which means it was gonna be itty bitty pieces of plastic. And as much as they've gotten over the QC issues of the actual figures themselves, this was something new and it's not quite working. I'm gonna have to do some home repair in order to get these to even work. Yeah, look how small that is connecting in there. That's just crazy. Height-wise, he stands around 5 and 11 16 inches. Unfortunately, I never got the SH Figure Arts Iron Spider, so no comparison to that here. I was too hyped up for this, because really, when it comes down to it, the Mafex Homecoming Spider-Man beats out the SH Figure Arts Homecoming Spider-Man. These two, you can tell it's the same dude in the suit. But between the two Homecomings, I just like the proportions here. I like the details. It just, really, the articulation, too. It just works out better overall. But if you did want to slip them into your SH Figure Arts display, here here he is with SH Figure Arts Iron Man and the SH Figure Arts Star Lord. I always thought the Star Lord was a little short, so here he is with the SH Figure Arts Doctor Strange. Here he is with the Marvel Legends Infinity War Iron Spider and the Marvel Legends Endgame Captain America. Skew's a little bit small, but it's so dang pretty, you may want to fit it in there. Okay, he may be a little bit small. Here's the Marvel Legends Nebula and the Marvel Legends Star Lord. So at the end of the day, I am still confident in my decision to get this over the SH Figure Arts version. And yes, I could throw a fit about the Waldos. But, <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm sure people are going to say, well, that's Mafex for you. But honestly, Mafex has upped their QC game tremendously over the past several years. When it comes to the figure itself, it's damn fine. It's got all the articulation I'd want. It's got the metallic sheen. It has all the details. It's all nice and tight. It, I feel like when I'm posing it, it's just going to go anywhere I want it to go. The alternate hands are nice. The webbing is awesome. The other heads, the Tom Holland isn't perfect, but it, it's something. The magnet feet, the magnet hands, but yes, when it comes to the Waldos, ooh, I, I, I don't know what happened. Like I mentioned during the review, I really feel like in order to get them movie accurate, they had to go really thin. 
and when it comes to plastic and lots of joints that uh, you go thin enough there's not going to be any saving them i fixed one already i'm going to have to fix another one and this one is definitely coming off so at that point i might as well replace all four of them with something a little heavier or more heavy duty joints something i don't know because the look of them's cool and the Waldos actually work above those ball joints at the bottom. And while the SH Figure Arts Waldos may be more sturdy, they just don't look accurate. They're big and thick and <laughs> they, they, they look kind of weird. So pound for pound against the Mayfex Homecoming Spider-Man, this falls just about even as being the best version of the character in this costume in action figure form. I think of the Waldos as kind of an extra thrown in there, they tried, they failed? Well, it got me halfway there. They gave me nice looking Waldos. I just have to make them work. So I'm happy to finally have this on the shelf, which really, when it comes down to it, it works as an in-game version too. So in that aspect, they're right on time, right? So if you like the review, comment, like, subscribe. I'll catch you on the foosh.